Okay. Um, it's five o'clock. We're starting the board of abatement meeting on Tuesday, August 6th at 5 p.m. here at the Rummy School. And um, so we're welcoming guests who are in the audience. Um, is there any amendments to the agenda? Okay. Um, and we'll have an explanation of the abatement hearing procedure, uh, swearing in applicants, witnesses, and listers. Um, so um, the procedure is generally that we have a conversation with the applicant and other witnesses, but it appears that we may not actually have applicants. We may not have them, but we have some written correspondence. Okay. 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 Do I need to swear you all in? You don't swear me in. Okay, swear the listeners in. All righty. Um, so, could you please all take the following oath? Um, under the pains and penalties of perjury, do you solemnly swear or affirm that the evidence you give in the abatement hearing under consideration shall be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. Shelly's down there. Yes, Shelly? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, so, Sarah, uh, we're going to start with the testimony um, from applicant Victoria Hallahan of 13 Ridge Road, um, followed by questions from the Board of Abatement for the procedure, which is, so I'll just quickly go through the procedure. Um, we're going to ask the applicant, who Sarah's going to be representing, Victoria, um, and uh, is there any disclosures? Um, does anyone need to disclose a conflict of interest for Victoria Hallahan? Okay, none. Is anybody on Zoom? No, okay. Um, and um, we'll ask the applicant to identify the statutory abatement category under which the abatement request is being made and then present her testimony. So that's what Sarah will be doing and other evidence. Um, if there are other witnesses and then, then we will have a chance to ask questions. Um, and then the listers can present, um, I'm sorry, we, I can invite the Board of uh, Abatement and the listers to question Sarah, um, ask the listers to present their testimony, invite the BOA members and the applicant to question the listers, and then we can invite brief closing statements from the applicant and the listers. Um, and then we can entertain a motion from the Board of Abatement to close the testimony, take action on the motion. Um, and then, Close the public abatement hearing and enter deliberative session, clearing the room, except for the BOA members who will be deliberating. deliberating. Um, or we can wait for another time. Um, but we can do both of them and then go into, right? Okay. So, all right. So does everyone understand those, those meeting rules? Okay. So um, do you have any questions, Sarah? On behalf of Victoria? Okay. Um, request, uh, okay, we already did that. So can you please identify the statutory abatement category? Um, and present your testimony, please. Okay, so obviously, I'm going to repeat and I don't think any here. And I'm just helping Victoria because I was helping her during her board of paper of Kaya. So, same time to request the bill. If you look at her application, she has checked, um, she has checked that she did have the charge of the real universal property law and the story during the year. Uh, that's the that's set for the Abatement. She's also taking an abatement for 2023 and 2024. If you look at your, and if you look at your the target, you'll see that she hasn't paid anything on the 2024 taxes, and she is only going to be two taxes. Not very much. Um, she may she, she may be paid on 2023. She may be paid on 2023 taxes. No, 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 no. Yeah, in 2023 and 2024. So, um, and uh, after I stayed in the middle of her during this time, she said her home was destroyed in July 2024, but I never returned. That's true that Kevin Thompson, our zoning administrator, has sent her a you know, letter saying that her, 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 she was threatened to be off the top of her, you know, how the flood water froze on July 5th. She has never, ever returned. So the house is a little while. That's it. Okay. Um, you think you can buy out, but just 
not apply after the people out of Okay, did she not apply? This is what I find really annoying that people who are displaced from the flood cannot are, are apparently not allowed to apply for uh, the homestead state payment because they're not living in the structure. So they don't get a state payment. So you'll see. Yes, but she didn't get one for 2024. I understand that, but your house was destroyed and you still now have to pay higher taxes. That just doesn't make sense. I would, and I probably will. Okay, good. Yeah, no, I probably will because I have a direct hotline for them. Um, so, I mean, it's not that many people. It shouldn't be that big of a deal. Okay, so that's why it's 1,083. Okay. Um, Does anyone have any questions from the BOA and listers that have questions for Sarah? Besides me. Point six go. Parcel. No, but it's based on the thirty one nine. I know. I think yeah. what, what Jan's asking is, did she is she being charged? The tax bill just represent the mobile home plan. It represents the mobile home plan. The listers did not adjust it. Other questions? I'm just going to ask a question on her. So that means what you just said. That means that's why 2024 uh, taxes are so much higher than 2020. Okay. Yeah. It went from 780 to 841, but she didn't get a state payment. That's why. Okay, yeah. So can I ask why you didn't put it off? Um, so it's supposed to work that um the BOA uh I'm sorry, um we get to be asking you questions. And then when we're done asking you questions, um the listers present their testimony. Okay. Yeah, you guys done asking questions. Yeah. So the listeners, why don't you tell us your testimony? We never found out about them. Uh, oh, okay. Well, and it looks like she's asking a payment for everything. And yeah. my question would be, you know, is the land still there? Is the land still the land and the trailer are still there? Uh, so I know that and then went to the drive by. So I don't know what condition the trailer's in. But then you got the the water, the sewer, the landscaping. Depending on what shape it's in, uh, normally that wouldn't be abated. I wouldn't think just just the home itself, and it looks like she's asking for all of it. But how do you know what the home is? Um, I've got the okay. sheet. Where does it and you, say? you look at the um, the little picture you've got that breaks down the land. Um, the site improvement would be the uh, well, the the sewer, the landscape would be on site improvement. So just so, at least on this on the one, one, so yeah. right here, right. I see land value is 12 2. Yeah, the land value is right here, 12 2. This and then the, the dwelling is 67. Correct. And then the site improvement right here. So that would be like the well or subject in their landscaping. So, one can break down for us um, everything, the values that right. don't include that, the house. The values that don't include then the don't include the dwelling. Yeah, yeah. this shows right there. The only thing that includes the dwelling is 25 2. Because if you look, 25 2. 66% is depreciated. So what's left of the yeah. dwelling right now is the 6,700. Okay. So 6,700 is actually two minutes that's left. 6,700. 6,700 dollars. That's what's left. The value. That's because it's already depreciated at 66 percent. So the dwelling itself is 6,700. The land um, is 12.2, and then that's why I said site improvements. You have to know if it affected our water or well because that um, the site improvement alone is uh, 13,000. And that would be your water, sewer, and landscape. So the the, the, the site improvement includes the, the the well to the twelve thousand two hundred plus for the well. Thirteen thousand uh, water, six thousand sewer, six thousand landscape, a thousand for a total of thirteen thousand. Okay. Twenty five two is the total value without the well. Okay. Okay. So that's yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there's your place that was uninhabitable, apparently. Okay. Um, okay, and, and she's in the buyout. 
she's she's applying for a buyout. So her land will no longer have any value after it's bought out, but she'll get something from the buyout. Um, well, the land will have value, just she won't own it. Well, the town will own it and no one can build on it. It's a floodplain. It becomes a floodplain because it would be a FEMA buyout. Well, as it is now, can it be built on? No. Um, if the town doesn't buy it out? Uh, no, 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 it couldn't. No. Okay, so we can't rebuild. No. Even if she didn't do a buyout, she could build one out, she could not rebuild Okay, so do we have a sense as what the land value is with, with well, but is, is that, is this land value? Uh, okay, so the land value that we're looking at here, um, is that consistent with it being a floodplain that cannot be built? When you go look at it, because it could have been a nice straight field where now it's an honor, and now it could be with. I know okay. now I looked at it, so I'm not sure. Looked at it, it's just hollow throw like a pitcher trailer. There's not much land at all. Uh, Can you see that? I'm sorry. Have that picture down? Yeah. Thank yeah. There's not that yeah. one. Yeah. It's just weeds and stuff. Yeah. yeah. And it's only point six, right? So they put just got a corner there, and there's there's uh, nothing there. And you know that I got to you guys the picture recently for um, Emma. Yes, Randy. So it's my understanding that she wanted to remove this mobile home and put place another mobile home in the exact location she would not be allowed. But we'll, we can talk about that in our deliberation, yeah. what we think about the value of the land. Um, okay, are there any more questions um, for Sarah who, on behalf of Victoria? There, there is land uh, around it. It's uh, all mowed. I don't know who owns that. Not her. I know it's not her, but it's all mowed. Nice care of it. But her pile. Okay. Just this little corner. Okay. Um, so, do, listeners, do you does anyone have any more questions or evidence or anything? Okay. So, do you have a brief closing statement, Sarah? Okay. Something that also this is a board of state. It's not an EPA. We're not talking just strictly real estate, but she, there are no funds to pay. Okay. She's beyond. Okay. Um. Okay, so now we are going to go to number two. We're going to deliberate on this after we're done with number two, um, which is uh, testimony from Dennis Delena of 121 Molly Supple Hill Road. Um, yep. Oh, they are great. Okay. Um, hi, Dennis. Can you hear us okay? Okay. Okay, can you hear us, Dennis? I can, yes, can you hear us? Yep. All right, very um, good, thank you. Great, thank you for, for coming. I'm very sorry for the loss of your home to the fire. Yes. Thank you. Um, I'm glad you guys weren't in it. Um, yes, so are we. Us too. So did you hear um, how the process goes? Were you here for some of this? No? Oh, yeah. came in okay. for some of it. What I was okay. saying is that the, the audience was a little broken, so. Okay. Um, is this the microphone? Okay. So um, we need to swear you both in. So I'm going to read something and you say um, yes. Okay. So okay. under the under the pains and penalties of perjury, do you solemnly swear or affirm that the evidence you give in the abatement hearing under consideration shall be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. I do. Okay, great. Okay, so um, we have process by how this works. So the first thing um, that we do is ask the Board of Abatement members if they have any uh, to disclose any conflicts of interest and why they might recuse themselves. Does anyone have a conflict of interest? No? Okay, so no one has a conflict of interest. Um, so we're going to ask you, we do have your application here. Do you have your application in front of you? I do not. Okay, so um, we're basically asking you to identify the statutory abatement 
category under which the abatement request is being made, and you you fixed uh, you checked off the box taxes or charges upon real or personal property lost or destroyed during the tax year. Correct. Um, okay, and so now you have the opportunity um, to present your testimony and other evidence um, followed by the testimony. Very good. Um, did um, I, I know I sent a letter with a few photographs. I don't know if the board had a chance to see that. Yeah, we yeah, have the yeah. packet, yeah. Okay, very good. Thank you. Um, so um, what, by testimony, you mean just explain the circumstances? Yeah, just what happened. Yeah. Okay, so on uh, early morning, we, we were visiting family in Connecticut on, on July, um, I think it was July 6th, the, the night of July 5th, we were in Connecticut, and we got a call from a neighbor on the morning of the 6th, uh, telling us our house was fully engulfed. This was around well, maybe seven o'clock in the morning or so. I can't remember exactly. Um, and uh, he wanted to make sure that we were not, our, our children were not in the house because all our cars were there. Um, once he found out we were okay, he's like, your house is fully engulfed. You need to get home. So we drove up from Connecticut, which is about a five hour ride. When we got there, there were, I, I think eight towns um, set up. And uh, um, and there was, uh, by the time we got there, there was nothing left. Most, the, most of the fire was out. Um, there was, it was as total a devastation as you could possibly imagine. Uh, there is absolutely nothing recognizable. Um, our well, our septic, and our power are all offline. And um, there's, um, we, we're just trying to figure out where, where to go from here. Okay. Um, all righty. So um, we, it's now time to invite the Board of Abatement members and the listers to ask questions of you. Um, so okay. are there questions for um, De uh, for Dennis and Davida? Uh, I'm sorry, yeah, go ahead. Uh, hi, this is Shelly, one of the listeners. Uh, yeah, here, can you pass that down? Uh, I guess my question is, I know that you had some outbuildings, like a two-story detached garage, uh, equipment shed, and also farm equipment shed. Were those destroyed also? The outbuildings are intact. Okay, and you said that um, your water, sewer, and landscape is offline. Is that been completely destroyed, or you just don't know because it hasn't been looked at? Um, I, I missed the first part. What is what are you? Oh, sewer. the water. Well, well, no. I mean, um, so we do know that this. Well, we're having somebody check the sewer on the twenty second, but um, as they were filling, as they were pouring water on the fire, um, it was going directly into the sewer pipe. Or in, in, I'm sorry, into our septic pipe. So we actually had a little bit of a fountain going on there. So we know that that's fouled. Um, we don't know if the water is fouled in the well because we don't have power to check it yet. Um, so yeah, so I don't I don't have specific tests to, to about that. Uh, another question: Are you planning on rebuilding? It sounds that is like our current are, plan. Yes. yes. So um, do yes. you know? Do you know if this would be done within the next year? I know our our oh. our, our list of year goes April first, April first. So we visit so, properties and assess properties. Sure. Yes, I'd love to give you a timeline. We um we just got our settlement check uh, about three or four days ago from the insurance company, and it's a little shy of where we want it to be. So we are um, we're in negotiations with the insurance company, but I do have three contractors trying um setting up bids for me right now um i you know it's vermont so and there's been a lot of flooding and a lot of damage so people are super busy and hard to get a hold of um our goal is to get it built as fast as possible so okay. I, I don't but i don't know a timeline okay but it definitely wouldn't be until next summer yeah i mean i don't, I don't see how it would start we still haven't had the property property cleared yet uh, okay. Okay. So what we'd probably like to do is is touch base before April, because that would make a big difference for next year for taxes. Okay. okay. Um. Are your are your children planning to continue to go to U thirty two? Our children go to Stowe um, through a, a a program that my my wife is a teacher at Stowe, and and back in the day when when they were entering school, they were allowed to go to there. So they actually go to Stowe. Questions. So 
Yeah, no, I was. Uh, um, so, any other questions? All right. So the next thing that happens is we ask the listers to present their testimony and other evidence. Do you have any testimony, listers? No, I can't put a thought or not to put it. Everything are still there. Got stuck in it. Okay. And parts are there. Um, um, I think the water and landscape. We're not sure what was just said. Excuse me, sir. We, we, we were not able to hear any of that uh, completely. Oh, yeah. So the listener said that they had gone to your site property and that's it. That's it. And experience and, and saw that the outbuildings were intact and that the land seemed okay and that the house was um destroyed and Correct. still stuff is there from the from the house. Mm -hmm. Um and okay, any other information for the listener? In terms of the application, what's the difference? What's the value of the land? You can see it on here. Yeah, we'll discuss it in our. Well, I, I guess I guess for their purpose, they it, we're going to discuss that they should know that what we're discussing rather than just discuss it in deliberation. But they're being on the same page. Yeah, but actually, it's on the same. It's on the Lester's card. The value, of the dwelling value, is is listed as one hundred and seventy six thousand one hundred. The land is 83.3, the site improvement is 17.5, and the outbuildings are 5,700. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, is there any more testimony from the listers? Okay, so there's no more testimony from the listers. Um, would you like to make any brief closing statements um, Dennis and Davida. Um, I, I, I don't believe so. I think um, uh, if they've been to the property, they, they know what we're dealing with. Yeah. Okay. Just, you know, we're just, we're trying to rebuild our lives. It's all so fresh and so shocking and so sad. And just, you know, we've lived there for 18 years. It's the only house our children have ever lived in. And, you know, we're just, we're trying to just figure everything out so we can rebuild and move back in. It's a steep learning curve. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm sure it's not anything that you're uh, schooled in. So, um, okay, so now what happens, you guys, is that um, you will um, you will uh, leave the meeting, and we uh, tell everyone else who's present who isn't a part of this to also step out, and then we deliberate. We deliberate, um, and um, and then we come up with a decision, and then that decision. Um, we expect to issue a written decision within 30 days of the close of our deliberations. Um, and our decision must state in detail the reason for our decision. Okay? Okay. 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 Sounds good. Thank you. So thank you for coming in and um, we'll be in touch within 30 days. All right. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Take thank care. You. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. Thank you.